Hello, and welcome back to Ponery's Penny Arcade, and this may look familiar to you. This is Anvil Saga and the First 30. I played this game nearly a year ago, and I really liked it. It's pixel art, it's throwback, it's all things for all people. It's a bit of a builder, an empire maker, or an RPG, love story, um, management of trade, relations, geopolitics, you name it. It's got a little bit of everything, which is really cool. I've tried to record this four times now, and real life and distractions and the fact that I had puppies the day this game came out. Not me personally, but my dog had puppies. Um, so, yeah, this is the first time I got to sit down and actually record something. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start the game. You're going to see a couple of things here, but I'm going to restart this one because it was a total disaster. I'm trying to aim for a very specific beginning to this playthrough that I don't normally do, and they keep ending badly, but they're supposed to. I'm trying to see if I get lucky just this once. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? We're naturally going to do the story mode. And if you haven't seen me play the, the demo, uh, I'll leave you a link in the description below for this. But because of that, we're going to go ahead and skip the tutorial because I believe I played it in that. And I've already played this game for a couple hours on my own personal time. So let's just go ahead and get started. That's it. Hold the hammer tight. Swing your arm up and strike the blank. I can't. I'll never become a master like you. Listen, when your mother and I came to France, we didn't have a single penny on us. Nothing. But the fire in the eyes and the old instruments. Really? Not a single penny. No more than a couple of thalers, to be sure. This is Arthur the hero of the story, and the last schnauzer I had before I became a Yorkie breeder. I'll leave his picture up there. Since childhood, he's been helping his father in the forge, but he's pretty good at any kind of craft. Arthur, my son, make some ingots at the smelter. We have a lot of work today. To complete orders, you'll need ingots. Ingots are smelted out of ore, obviously. Here's your ore. Here's your ingots. Here's your forge prestige, your money. I guess this is like plating and then logs. We'll get to the rest later. Right click on the smelter so that Arthur starts making ingots. It's automated, you just click it and wait. Excellent work, son. Go flip the sign. We're opening. Left click, the, uh, left click the sign to start accepting orders. There we go. Look, it's Finley. His whole family comes to the fair every year. Young lady next to him is his daughter, Olivia. Is it the merchant from Gascony? Right there. Yep, judging by the look on his face, he's pretty happy with my forging. And here comes Jean-Jacques Jr. Ugh, I can't stand that guy. I'm going to point out something about this guy in a minute. There, there. His father's a respectable craftsman, and Jean-Jacques Jr. isn't too slow, either. Though he didn't inherit his father's town. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. Learn how to conduct business, because that's what he excels at. Oscar! You're here, too. Oscar is your dad's name. And coincidentally, he was the first schnauzer I ever owned when I was a teenager. I'll leave his picture up there, too. <laughs> How are you faring? Thanks for the instruments, and the harness is also perfect. Glad to see you at the fair. What brings you here, Finley? I'd like to order a small trinket, a brooch for my beloved daughter. Do this for me, would you? Piece of cake, right, son? You've got this. Monsieur Finley, Mademoiselle Olivia... I'm glad to see you both. Hello, Arthur. Oscar. Why didn't you order the brooch from my father? His shop's just over there. So, not only is he a simp and a cock blocker, but his nose is the wrong color. It should be about as brown as the dirty standing on. For a lady as charming as the fair Olivia, I could have given you a discount. Thank you, Jean-Jacques, but Oscar and I had gone through hell and high water together, 
Any orders I have are only for him. Well, let's see how Arthur does it then. So, he's the first, but there'll be customers when you go into the main story. This is the job they want. This is what it'll cost you. This is what you'll make on it. And then you can accept or reject the order. Now, seeing this is a required thing for the story, there's no timer up here in between, and I can't reject it, so I have to build it. Sometimes you have to make a choice that will affect events further in the story. You'll see one of them right now. Each option has a chance of success and failure. Study them carefully because you won't be able to go back on your choice. So the merchant ordered a brooch for his beautiful daughter. Hi, baby. My father brought a jewel for Baron's ring with him. I could probably use that. Now, if I do this, I have an 80% chance of success for this decision. I get a skill level bonus and the equipment bonus for my dad's stuff. And I get, I make Olivia really happy. Or I can just keep it simple. I have a 70% chance of success. But I don't piss anybody off. And my dad is proud of me for not being dishonest. Or we can choose option three. I could use a fake jewel. I have a 50-50 shot at this. I won't have to face the Baron's anger while I add a little something extra for the brooch that might please Olivia. So let's just do this and see what happens. Do we succeed or fail? Um, you've done something wrong. Let me have a look. Damn. I am determined to get this part right. So, let me take a quick cut, and I'm gonna try this until I get it right. Because I really wanna do the crooked way this time. I always play it the clean way. I wanna play it the crooked way for this series. Just this once. Because I, I know what happens next, so. Sit tight, let me record that. Or let me try to do it, and then we'll join you back if I succeed. One eternity later. Okay, so in my many attempts to try to make this succeed, I've noticed something. The materials you need to do the job and the payout is randomly generated. Now, there's a high threshold and a low threshold. And so far, I've noticed that the high is three and the low is two. And with money, the high is eight and the low is five. So they do it within reason. Gonna take this fake jewel. I'm telling you. Ah Here we go. Finally. It took about two dozen attempts before this worked. Good lad. Here, it's all done. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, is it ready? Excellent. You're doing rather well, young man. Yes, he's a real star. Enjoy wearing it. We would have made a much better brooch, though Arthur might have ruined the materials, so at least there's something. Hello, blacksmith. Still working hard? Yes, more or less. My son's helping out a lot. He's even much better at me than some things now. Ah, he really looks like you. Now then, will you make me a ring? We'll do our best. Get to it, son. Good day, esteemed Baron. If you'd given the order to my father, you'd already have your new ring. Brown noser. I'm aware of your father's skills as a craftsman. However, Oscar can do the same work for half the price. It guarantees quality. Good thing I didn't use the jewel. This Baron can certainly be a pain in the neck. Alright. If I don't do this, he gets pissed. If I do do this, 80% chance of success, and he's happy. Let's keep him happy. We're all about making everybody happy. Oh, is it really done? It's ready, sir. Here. The esteemed Baron picked such a fine gem that even you, Arthur, would be hard-pressed to ruin it. And I want to throw his ass in that, in that furnace. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. Perhaps you'll manage the same on your own one day. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Not bad. Good work. You're a chip off the old block. Good lad. Thanks. It's great to have your work appreciated. Sure it is. Have a good day and a great time at the fair. Looks like it's time for us to head home too. Close the stall. But I wanna... You know. Let's go, son. Father, what do you think about me and Olivia? Can we be friends? We're just not that equal, son. But, in a merchant's family, a groom is judged by how fat his purse is. Cheer up. Everything is in your hands. My father's words were no surprise to me. Inequality is both the scourge and the foundation of our society. However, the sincere smile and charming eyes of the merchant's daughter made my heart ache. The fair was coming to an end, so we gathered our belongings and set off for home. It was the last fair I got to visit with my father. The disease hit him hard, but even to his last breath, he did what he, his best to transfer his knowledge and skills to me, even when he could barely hold a hammer in his trembling hands. I had no choice but to make my father proud and become a decent apprentice. You have a small house and a forge at your disposal. It's not much, but it's still better than starting from scratch. Here your glorious path to wealth in the heart of your beloved girl begins. But all this lies far ahead, and for now, let's just kindle the forge. Time to blow the dust off my father's anvil. Let's see what I can still remember. I need to complete five orders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going ahead and smelting this ore. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make a purchase, too. i got 200 gold to play with. So the first thing I want to do is... Let's see. I'm going to need more ore. If I could turn it into this, it's just going to take me some time. But it's half the money. That seems to make a lot of sense, doesn't it? So anyway, this is the Merchant's tab. These are for consumables, these things here. Food, which is stored in your house over here in the pantry. These are skill books, which you'll get later on. And then obviously equipment to make your job a little bit easier. So, the first thing I think I want to do... Hmm. I could invest in this and work faster, I think? Not yet. Let's just go ahead and buy 10 more ore. We'll send in the job, or the order, rather. That way I'll be flush with uh, ingots. So I can do the five orders to get through this quickly. So when you place the order like that and you see this little icon, the courier is on his way. He comes from right to left, so this is this guy here, if you're wondering why the hell somebody's just walking through your house. Anyway, he'll drop it off in this treasure chest here, or storage box, and now I've got the 10 ore here, and I'll just go ahead and forge out the 20 pieces. And while I'm doing this, I'm building up the skill for smelting, as you can see here. And once it reaches the max, he'll just stop because you waste materials otherwise. So over here on the left, you have your hit points bar. You have your energy for you know how much work can you do before you have to crash or eat. And here's your sati you know, satiation, your hunger. Obviously, this is your pay and your mood. And choose the worker's equipment. Ah, so I have to add it. I have to equip these things that I buy. Fair enough. Well, I think the first thing what I need to do is I need to save for the mining equipment. No, I need to save to build a mine. Let's go ahead and open the shop, though. And we'll just hang out right here and just wait for customers to come. They usually enter from the left. So customers don't just walk through your house. Although there's a lot of peeping toms, which you'll see soon. All right, so this guy wants me to build this. It'll cost me four ingots, and it'll pay me ten gold. Oh, he's going to play me a song while I do it. 
This here is the time left to complete the order. Let's go ahead and build that for him. It does not reset when you accept the job, so don't sit around. But you can stack jobs like this, and he'll just start the next one as soon as the last one's completed, as you can see here. There you go. Your character has received a new trait. Characters can receive negative or positive traits. Each affects character's ability or uh, behavior in a specific way. Please don't be pacifist. That's a negative trait, and it doesn't allow you to create weapons for the military, which means you have to hire someone else to do it for you. Carefully read trait descriptions and pick the assignment for e or the best assignment for each work. All right, so my trait is pacifist, of course. Damn it. <sighs> We're too far in now. We're just going to do this. Screw it. Alright. Let's go ahead and work on the forge while we wait. It's this old timer one. I don't know what these are. Like, it doesn't really say. He fell asleep while waiting for me to do the job. Oh, woke him up. That should be all the jobs. There we go. I'm running out of ore again. It's time to dig a shaft. Just sounds weird. Sooner or later you'll start expanding your forge, building more rooms and even digging deeper into the earth. Each forge needs a constant supply of ore. You can purchase it from the merchant, but it's much more efficient just to mine it yourself. Let's dig a shaft right in our cellar. To expand and upgrade the forge, open the construction menu. There goes close the shop. Go ahead and hit the construction menu. Wants me to choose a room. So this is to upgrade your stall. These are the rooms you can build above your ground floor. Out here on the other side of your house. But it wants me to build down here. So we're going to build this. And I don't have a type of anything I could choose yet. So we'll just accept this. Each room's construction takes some time. You'll have to wait for the builder to finish their work. So the builder will come from right to left as well, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to take him some time to get here. There he is. So he'll make his way over here. And he'll build this out. In the meantime, I can just work the forge. I hate the fact that it gave me pacifist again. Which means I'll need to hire someone else to do that work. Annoyed. Okay. It's pretty late, so I think what we'll do is just sleep. Keep an eye on your character's energy. A tired character will make mistakes while forging and may damage the workpiece. Another negative is if you're very tired or hungry, not only do you make a lot of mistakes, it resets your progress bar while the job bar continues to tick down. Send your workers to sleep so they can regain energy. The more comfortable the bed, the faster the character rests. This guy will just keep working through the night because that's his job. Excellent. Now choose the type of your new room. Each room has its own function and requires specific furniture. A room that doesn't have a function or the required furniture will remain inactive. An exclamation mark will notify you of that. Press the exclamation mark to choose the room type or buy furniture depending on what the room lacks before it can become operational. Alright, so this is going to be that it keeps the lotion on its skin, or it puts the lotion on its skin, or otherwise it gets the hose again. Not really. So I need this to be a workroom, and I need it to be a mine. So now that it's a mine, I need to build a mine entrance and a crate. So... This 
here. And what else do I need? Right here? Mine entrance, yeah. Okay, so now the mine is officially a thing. Let's go ahead and let him get full health before I start working him. And he'll get out of bed on his own. There we go. Let's go ahead and have him work the mine. Build up some ore. Since I bought the chest, now I can carry 35 because the original one I believe was 20 and this adds 15. I don't know why it says only food because obviously ore can go in there as well. And obviously, the more proficient you get at it, like this here. They'll become better and better at it. It looks like I have two negatives already. So that means I have to overcome this to become a better miner. Which, oh look, we picked up another trait, arachnophobia. While his while this worker was in the mine, a whole nest of spiders fell on him. And whenever he works in the mine, there's a 10% chance of him looking around to watch out for these creatures. Yeah, kind of sucks. I wonder if I can do something about making this uh, brighter. Nope. Apparently I could... S okay, so I move it, rotate it, or sell it. Nope. Since I have these tables, uh, you can add the candles to them to light up the room. But it looks like there's nothing I can do. So it's a mine. What did I expect? It's supposed to be dark, right? Especially at night. But as you can see, it's slow going. Really slow. Oh, wait, I can speed up the game. That's right. Triple speed. There we go. That's how I, that he was watching for spiders there. A little delay. Alright, looks like daylight's starting to appear. Before we start working, let's go ahead and get something to eat. There's Peep and Tom here. Okay, so now who cook? That's automatic. We're out of food. Now, he doesn't eat automatically. You have to tell him to go eat after he makes it and pl places it on the table. The only reason I think it does that is because once you have multiple employees, you might use somebody to cook food for somebody else. So that way it'll stay on the table and then you can just send the person to go eat, which might be efficient, actually. It's hard work in the forge alone. The village chief has sent you three young men who want to become your apprentices. This young man is new to the village. He came from Gascony. My name is Theris, Master Blacksmith. Monty is the local trickster and rascal. He tries to look like a nobleman in everything he does. My name is Monty, sir. I've wanted to become your apprentice for ages. Will you have me? Uh, yeah. And this is Stone, winner of all the fights and wrestling contests in the village. I can do all kinds of things, and I'm strong as an ox. I'll sure be useful. So, which of them is worthy of becoming your apprentice? So, there's three people, and each one has positives and negatives. If I choose Theris, I make France happy because he's a dude from Gascony. But I make my relationship with England slightly worse. If I choose Monty, I make my relationship with both worse, but I raise it with the bandits by a lot. If I pick Stone, I gain favor with England, but I lose favor with France, the home country. I'm kind 
gonna think in stone because he's really durable. I've played him before. I've tried Monty before too, which may be useful for bandits because I can always restore relationships. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do that. You've made the right choice, sir. You won't regret it. Now you have an apprentice. He will need a room where he can where he can rest in after hard work. Keep an eye on his level of fatigue and pay his salary on time. Your apprentice skills will improve with time. And now, let's get to it. Accept and successfully complete five orders with Monty's help. Alright, so that means Monty's going to actually be doing the work. So I'm going to have him work the forge. Ah, the forge's workers will demand to be paid for, to continue their work. The refusal will upset them. And if their mood drops further, an apprentice will leave the forge. If you want to get rid of a worker, you, do, you don't need to remove the stairs to the cellar. You can just fire them. <laughs> no, I'm not going to kill them. Come on. You're a smith, right? In the name of His Majesty the Dauphin of France, I'm authorized to collect the land tax for the good of our country. All of you just prey on honest people, no matter what you call yourselves. Are you paying or not? Yeah. Extortionist. Alright, so you're gonna go do that. You're going to go back into the mines because I need more ore. Especially since Monty has to do five jobs. His stats, uh, he has no traits yet. He can make extra money, which is nice. We need money. Um, and he requires ten gold a day, so yeah, we're gonna have to work pretty hard. There was something else I was going to do, but I can't remember right away. Oh yeah, we need to buy food. So, let's get... Three meals worth of food. We're going to need it. Alright, Monty. We're in business. Just wait for the jobs to come. Now. What are you doing? Oh, you need to go back to the mine. You need to wait for the jobs. You need chain. Man, you only use four ingots? Fine, whatever. So this will work on Monty's uh, crafting skill, which is fine. She needs chains, and it requires three. Fine. Very good, man. Town drunk. You need chains as well. Man. There we go. Looks a bit of a noble. Okay. He's eating apples or something. Well, he even did a little animation cleaning his hands afterwards. That's pretty good. So every time we finish a job, we're getting uh, fame too, which will be required to upgrade and modify and get new stuff. The news are getting worse and worse. Several French cities have supported the English. The idiots are fighting for empty promises. More than anything, I hope that the war doesn't reach this place, or both of us will end up doing hard labor instead of hard work. There we go. Go back to the forge. In the meantime. No, he just sits there and flicks a coin while he's working this. Keep you busy. There we go. Horseshoes. Let's 
So this is the part where you have to start slowly micromanaging your work. So I've got two people now, so I need two people to do two different jobs at the same time. And they always stay on top of it. Because as soon as you run out of ore, you, your income streams just stops. And we're going to have to do some upgrades very soon that are quite expensive. There we go. What do you require? You need three? Alright, you're the last job of the day then. I'm going to close the sign so she gets the last job of the day. I think Arthur is able to mine more than one bar at a time sometimes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a different ability. But I swear, I had zero, and he just got three. So I'm going to watch this for a second. Yeah, he's doing two at a time. Hmm. All right, let me check out their stats. Arthur is a bit tired. Monty is seemingly okay. All right, I think what I'll do is to conserve my energy... I'm going to send Arthur to bed. It's nighttime anyway. And I will send Monty into the mines. But we're out of time for the day. So this was the first 30 of Anvil Saga. And if you like what you see here, I'll leave you a link in the description below to get a copy for yourself. Which I believe is on sale because it just came out and there's usually a discount. So anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome. But if you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, maybe check out my other playlist and see if my other interests might be of interest to you. That's all I've got for you today, but we'll be back for the next 30 of Anvil Saga tomorrow. Later.